Last time we did a thousand years in Europe, today we're doing a thousand years in Asia. So for today's video, I decided to start our two humans off in eastern China area. The first empire was Al, whose slogan was Rock is the Truth. And the first two humans were Bikku Naiwi and Kitcha Sim, who I decided to rename to Kuni and Kitcha. It was year one. Kitcha got to work on stockpiling berries. Meanwhile, Kuni began constructing basic shelters. And in year three, they had a son, Unav, who somehow was born at three years old? Yeah, something doesn't add up here. They had also elected Kitcha as the ruler of their new civilization. For of the two, he possessed the most kingly traits, such as being greedy and... Uh, paranoid. At year five, Al had grown to five population. The new additions were Bochap, who apparently was just kind of a madman, and Kushado, who... Literally just had nothing interesting about him. With the quickly growing population, Kitcha and Kuna worked hard on building more structures to house them. And in year 10, their numbers had grown to 13. They had now discovered how to make rudimentary weapons and could now protect themselves from the dangerous creatures that threatened their village. Kuni also began to become depressed. But I would too if I lived in this world. And a few of Kuni and Kitcha's children had now reached adulthood. Bochap, who was now just an unhinged adult. And Kushado, who... Well, you know. Year 15, Al had now grown into a small village. They had just discovered how to build houses out of wood and were beginning to be able to support larger and larger populations. In year 20, King Kitcha ordered construction of a second colony. Kushado was named ruler of this new colony. At this time, an army was also being organized by Al, which now consisted of six soldiers and was led by Kitcha and Kuni's firstborn, Unav. They had invented swords. They just, they weren't using them for some reason. In year 30, a new colony was built. You Shago, and Al was now expanding northeast into Kyrgyzstan area. Bochap was named ruler of this new settlement. The total population of Al now sat at 86, and their army had grown to 20 soldiers. In year 50, multiple things happened. Al had expanded into two new colonies, Adrun and Aftrun, and Aftrun was hit by a meteor. <laughs> the climate of the world also began to change and large clouds and rain rolled over the landscape. As you can imagine, this just made things worse for Kuni. But it wasn't all bad though, for hardship breeds innovation, and Al's technology was rapidly becoming more advanced. They now built roads, which helped connect the new colonies to each other, as well as windmills, better housing, and trading. Year 60, King Kitcha passed away. And remember Kitcha and Kuni's maniac son, Bochap? Yeah, that's, that's who they chose to elect in this place. This was also the same year a massive earthquake hit Al. Coincidence? I think not! Thankfully, Bochap was only king for 10 years. In year 70, he passed away. With the kingdom in disarray after the death of the king, Kushado saw an opportunity to start an uprising. Much of Al's army had joined the rebellion, and they charged into Al's eastern colonies. And they managed to claim Aftrun, but Al's army flanked them and moved into their capital city. Ashra's army continued to push, but were defeated before they could claim another colony. After this defeat, the rebellion fell apart, and were reclaimed in just two years. Year 75, Al now had grown to 450 population and continued to expand their borders. They moved south through Nepal and India, north into Mongolia, and northwest into Kazakhstan. Year 90, a new rebellion was started, Tochi of Moon. And, well, they were conquered almost immediately. But where one rebellion failed, another took its place. And when that one failed, well, I don't know. In the year 105, after several failed insurgencies, one actually started to show promise. These were the new empires Huli Uzak and Great Ash. Between these two, they finally had the numbers not only to rival Al, but outnumber them. Being completely surrounded, Al could only keep their borders defended for so long, and once Ash and Usak broke through, there was no stopping them. And in year 110, they had completely been wiped off the continent. Al, the first empire of the world, had been defeated. The war had caused Al to develop many new technologies, which Usak and Ash now enjoyed, such as new weaponry, as well as the refining of copper for stronger weapons. Year 120, Ash became discontent with having to share Asia with their neighbors, and declared war on them. Great Ash did outnumber Usak, but not by much. Usak met Ash's army at the border, and fought as hard as they could. But Ash's superior numbers proved to be too much of an advantage, and their army could not hold them off. Even Usak's king led a squad to fight at the border as a last-ditch effort, which they slowed down Ash's army, but could not defeat them. At year 125, Usak had dropped below 300 population, and had been reduced to just a few northern colonies. 25 years later, in year 
150, they had just one city left, which Ash launched an all-out attack on. They were defeated in the same year. Great Ash now stood at nearly a thousand population and 250 army, but with such a large populace and so much land to maintain, would they be able to keep the peace within their borders? We'd have to see. Turns out, they could not. And just five years later, the new empire Ochimo split off from Great Ash. They were led by King Upichiyo, who was brave but maybe a little too brave. Ochimo did not stand a chance against Ash's armies and had lost all but two colonies. But this would not be the end of the uprising against Great Ash, for new ones began to appear, such as Realm of the Huva in year 165 and Holy Apumi in year 170. The fighting would end with them though, for instead of continuing the war, they instead proposed a worldwide treaty, which was accepted. Ochimo even proposed an alliance between them and Great Ash. The empires continued to spread out, Great Ash moving towards the Middle East Huva now occupying many of the stands, and Holy Apumi moving south into Indonesia. In year 180, a heat wave swept across Asia, and a war had been started between the Order of People and Realm of the Huva. Realm of the Huva did not stand a chance against their alliance, and in just 10 years, they were reduced to just a single colony. In the year 200, Ash and Ochimo broke through their last city's defenses. Huva soon fell. Ash had now returned to being the largest empire, their numbers having grown to almost a thousand. Apumi now occupied the northern parts of Indonesia, and it also swept around Great Ash to claim Turkey and Syria. Great Ash's king, Noko, also proposed they break free from their alliance with Ochimo. Then they declared war on them. Did not see that coming. Meanwhile, Apumi was over here just being the happiest empire ever. You could tell how much of a peaceful empire they were compared to Ash and Ochimo just by their slogan. This as opposed to this. In year 210, the first assault on Ochimo began, but the war was not Ochimo's only problem, for a fire had begun in eastern Russia, and was slowly making its way towards them. Ash had the numbers to attack on multiple fronts, and Ochimo came to defend as best they could. Ten years later, Ochimo and Ash had only managed to trade a couple colonies, and Ash, being overconfident, dragged Apumi into their war. By year 240, Ochimo's army had all but been exhausted, and Ash walked quickly through their cities. Year 250, Ash had gotten all they wanted from Ochimo, and ended the war between them. Year 270, Ash had two rebellions, M and the Ui, which they ended the war with Apumi to focus on. The war between Ash and its rebellions lasted only five years with an agreement eventually being made between them, but Ash was not out of the woods yet. For just a few years later, two more rebellions were started, Ur and Realm of the Wow. For the first time, Ash had reason to be afraid, for these two empires together exceeded Ash's military numbers. In a surprising turn of events though, the Uhihi teamed up with Great Ash against Ur. Would this save Ash? We'd have to find out. By year 300, Ur had been pushed back just to the eastern shores of China. A few wars also broke out between the smaller empires, Ochimo going to war with Realm of the Wow and Holy Apumi going to war with M. In year 310, the sun finally returned. Ur had been destroyed, and Wow was on the verge of destruction. An alliance was proposed between the Uhihi and Ochimo, and the friendship of people was formed. They had a plan. There were talks of an uprising in Great Ash, and the friendship of people were going to wait until it went through to attempt to destroy them. The rebellion started, and Ogarig was formed. It was time for Uhihi and Ochimo to attack. Having lost nearly half their population to the rebels, Great Ash did not stand a chance against their three enemies. By 340, they only occupied a small part of Indonesia, and just a few years later, they were destroyed. Year 350, new alliances were formed, this time between Ochimo and Apumi and Ogarig and M, and a war had just begun between the Uhihi and Ochimo's alliance. Being just a small island nation, Holy Apumi was not much help when the Uhihi attacked. Ochimo was losing land fast, and by year 375, they only had a few colonies left. Year 400 came and they were gone. Apumi survived the war though. The Uhi's victory was short-lived though, for soon after several rebellions broke out among their cities, such as Elo and the Vacus. Soon it seemed the entire world was at war with them, but they even still outnumbered their multitude of enemies. As the war dragged on though, they gained more and more enemies, such as Chaig and Uch, and they were quickly losing their advantage. Year 430, the war ended. No empires had been destroyed, at least none we cared much about, but a couple empires such as Wee and Elo had been greatly reduced. The Alliance of Big was also formed, consisting of six empires, many of them new, such as Holy Hu, the Vakist, Elo, Uch, the Uhihi, which was surprising, and Apumi. An alliance was also formed between Ogarig and M. In year 440, literally everyone, everyone, declared war on Realm of the Wii. I 
I have no idea why. Instead of launching a normal naval invasion, they thought it more effective to literally just helped them with hundreds of arrows from the shoreline, which actually worked pretty well. As you can imagine, they did not last very long. Year 450 rolled around and the world went to war once again, this time between the two main alliances. Alliance of Big and Great Union, which Chaig was now a part of. Chaig, now only occupying the new Siberian islands, was quickly conquered. Em and Ogarig soon followed behind them. In year 470, the Alliance of Big was dissolved, meaning all nations were free to go to war once again. Vakas and Elo were the first, followed by Holy Hu and Uch hegemony. The Uhihi soon joined them against Uch, and by year 490, they were gone. Meanwhile, Vakas and Elo decided to end the fighting between them, and even proposed an alliance. Thus concluding the most boring and uneventful war of this entire game. Year 500, the alliance was accepted by both sides, and the Ice Union was formed. The same year, several rebellions broke out in the Uhihi, including Eros, Sib, and Chemi, the most precious little empire. Between the three of them, their numbers were comparable to the Uhihis. Perhaps this would finally be the end of their reign of terror. Year 515, Sib was taking the brunt of the attacks, but Holy Hu joined into the fight, which could potentially turn the tide of the war. Holy Holy Hu had joined in at just the right time, for with the Uhi's army occupied with the other empires, it left the western flank exposed. Five years later, the Uhi's rebellions resolved to end the conflict, but Holy Hu continued on in their assault. At this time, a new alliance was created, this one between Eros, Evifef, and Holy Apumi. Year 550, the Uhihi was destroyed. We had 10 years of peace until the Union of Supreme went to war with the Ice Union. Year 570, the Vacus was destroyed, but Elo was spared at the last moment. They then banded together with Hu and attacked Eros, which were conquered in just a couple years. Year 600, after the sun returned, a revolution began in Holy Hu. Their people split off into several new empires, such as Chesh, Lanaichu, the O Kingdom, and Realm of the Gada. O and Holy Par were short-lived, and Chesh and Lanaichu came to an agreement with Holy Hu, but Gada refused to compromise with their enemies. Elo ended up at odds with Chesh and attacked them. By year 630, they had claimed all of Chesh's land. Over the course of the years leading up to 660, the citizens of Holy Hu's discontentment only grew and grew, and soon new empires were formed, such as Uhu, Great Yucca, Paihin, and Alifosh. Elo had also split into the new empire Gosu. Wars were started, treaties were made, and soon it came down to just Alifosh and Hu against Elo. But once again, a treaty was made at the last second, and Elo had again cheated death. Year 700, Hu just kind of randomly decided to kill Gosu, and the civil unrest in Hu finally hit a breaking point. Nearly 2,000 citizens broke off and formed Great OP and the Yulehol. Yul Yulel Kingdom. The Alifosh and Elo also decided to side with them against Holy Hu. The conflict was soon resolved, with Holy Hu being pushed back to Japan and the new Siberian islands. Holy Hu saw no other option now but to join with the rebel empires, and the Sword of Holy was formed. The Union of Supreme still existed between the Lonaichu, Apumi, and Chemi, and Void Power was a relatively new alliance between the Alifosh and Elo. The Sword of Holy Alliance went to war with Void Power. Elo was destroyed almost immediately but the Alifosh managed to hold them off for a few years. In year 750, Sword of Holy soldiers finally reached Alifosh's last colony, and they were no more. After the war, and with no need for the alliance anymore, the Sword of Holy was dissolved. Yolel ended up joining the Union of Supreme, which now was the only alliance. Great OP, who were not as OP as they thought, declared war on the newly founded alliance. It mostly came down to Yolel versus OP. The other allies tried their best, but they weren't much help. Year 790, Great OP fell down to only 700 population, and by year 800, they had been conquered. Holy Hu again just barely escaped death. This same year, the Union of Supreme was ended, and Yulel was by far the largest empire. Yulel managed to keep their citizens happy for another 25 years, but nothing lasts forever, and in 825, ideas of rebellion stirred. Nida was formed, followed by Holy Yud, Cheko, and Ru of Sun. Yulel tried to go after the weakest empires first, focusing on Nida, but Nida somehow held their ground, even managing to push back and reclaim their colonies. By year 850, with the help of their allies, Nida managed to push Yulel back to only occupying the northwest corner of Asia. The war soon ended with a treaty being made between them. In year 860, Payan decided to make some bad choices, and 
yeah, you can guess what happened. Holy Yud then decided to attack Nida and conquer them in just a few years. Yud had now become the largest empire in Asia. Year 900, a new ice age began, and war was just on the horizon. Cheko declared war on Yehel, and they were fairly evenly matched. Holy Yud also had a rebellion, Holy Yavai, and this meant that Rule of Sun had now taken the number one spot, but not for long. Year 910, the rebellion was quashed, and Holy Yud was back to being on top. Rue of Sun then attacked Holy Yud, hoping to finally end the tug of war between them. The game was on. Unfortunately, Yud did have allies, but even still, their army sizes were almost the same. There was a back and forth for a few years. Yud would take a colony only for Rue to take a different one at the same time. Holy Hu once again found themselves caught in the crossfire, and after 500 years of being on the continent, they were finally destroyed. In year 920, the war raged on. Rue still had a lot of fight in them, but Yud began to pull ahead and overwhelm their armies. Year 930, the conflict between Cheko and Yehel was resolved, and Rue had only a few colonies left. A few years later, the Yud and Rue's war had ended with a treaty. I feel like that's happened a lot in this game. Rue now only occupied the same islands Holy Hu once did. Over the next 25 years, two rebellions broke out in Holy Yud. By of Moon, which Cheko handled, and in year 975, Wevi. That same year, a new war was started. This was between Yud, Lonaichu, and Yalel against Cheko and Wevi. This was the last war of the world. They were evenly matched. Cheko and Wevi showed promise at first, Cheko making quick work of Yud's colonies. Then Yud got a second wind and pushed them back. Then Cheko made a comeback. Also, Wevi got killed. Year 990 came, and after nearly 15 years of fighting, Cheko's armies had been exhausted, and Holy Yud finally began to secure some more permanent ground. Just short of year 1000, Cheko was nearly gone. The entirety of Yud's army rushed for their last city, and soon, the war was over. We had reached year 1000 and six empires still stood. Holy Yud, the Lanaichu, Yalel, Chemi, Holy Apumi, and Ru of Sun. Holy Yud ended with the most population at nearly 5,000, and Holy Apumi had lasted the longest at almost 840 years. We started with only two people and ended with 7,400. And over the course of a thousand years, we had 162,000 deaths. Thank you for watching.